Son, that life that I am will live on forever. And Jesus says it will live on with Him in glory. So we have His Spirit within us, and His Spirit is love. His Spirit is joy. So we are joy, are we not? Sad to say, I don't always live it. I catch myself in situations sometimes and I, I ask myself, where is the joy of the Lord? You Moses, where is it? Well, according to Scripture, the Holy Spirit is in me. It's there. I've hidden it somewhere. I've grieved Him. Not only love and joy, but peace. Jesus says in this scripture that he's going to give his peace. The Holy Spirit is peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Jesus is peace. And he indwells each believer. Jesus says, I'm going to send him to you. I'm going to give you peace. You don't have to worry. You don't have to be anxious. You don't have to stress out over anything. Why? Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Though the world pass away, his word and his spirit are not going to pass away. So why should I worry? I can't change anything. I get a chance to remind many people of that every day when they come into the store and I'm working. That it, it, would, it doesn't do any good to complain about my circumstances or their circumstances because we can't change one thing. But we can allow the joy of the Lord and the peace of the Lord that passes all understanding to come out of our lives. We don't have to work it up. It's there. We don't have to teach about it, study about it, learn, take a test. It's there. He says, my peace I give to you. He says, I don't give it like the world gives it. How does the world give it? We have a young man that's been visiting with us going in the military someday. He's going in to defend peace. He's going in to provide peace. But peace isn't the absence of conflict. That's the world's peace. We sign treaties and break them. We give peace and we take it back. We give peace and we destroy it. We fight for peace and then, then it's, it's not there anymore because something uprises again and we have to take it back again. Peace is a fleeting thing in this world if it's applied only to a conflict that's going on. <coughs> Peace is a fleeting thing when we are focused on our circumstances financially at home. You see, if I am so focused on my financial situation at home and, and the bills that come in and, and all that I have to take care of, there's no peace in that, is there? It's something I wish I didn't have to do when I could do away with, right? Right? It is conflict between me and those that I owe money to because they want their money and I have to figure out how to get it to them. Amen. Again, if I have to speak louder and you have to turn it off, just let me know. <coughs> but there can be a lack of peace in the midst of our home life. Dysfunctional family. Conflict within the family. I can, I can push hope's buttons whenever I'm thinking only of myself. Amen? Oh, y'all know it's true. <laughs> when we think only of ourselves, we create a lack of peace in the family because we are out for a certain thing. Peace is not the lack of conflict or absence of conflict. Peace 
is the inner joy, understanding, assured hope, the, the presence of Almighty God in the believer. And if we focus on Him, it doesn't matter what's going on around us. It doesn't matter if I get a bill in the mail and there's no money in the bank account. Why? Because my peace rests in the Lord Jesus Christ and not in my bank account. Turn it off. Turn it off. It's turned off. I hold the plug. There's peace when we have to listen to a radio during church. <laughs> but we have to come to the point where we realize that it's God's Spirit is dwelling in us and it doesn't matter what's going on. My peace doesn't rest in pointing credit to you. My peace doesn't rest Y'all can forgive me. In Sunset Park Baptist Church. Deacons are an odd lot. They are men who are chosen and picked out as spiritual leaders in the church. Spiritual men filled with the Spirit of God. And I'm not talking about any of them here. We don't have any deacons like I'm fixing to mention here. Praise the Lord. They can be so fleshly. Preachers can too. I'm not just picking on them. They can be so fleshly. <coughs> At a church, when I was a new minister, young in the Lord, working part time, taking care of my young family. We only had Abigail at that time. I remember we were at a small church that ran about 35. I was engaged in conversation with a young man in the church about insurance. Lord, please forgive me for talking about insurance. <laughs> and he wanted to know what kind I had, what company I was with. And I told him. The next Sunday, his dad, who was a deacon in the church, backed me in a corner. I had nowhere to go. Stuck his finger in my face and said, that's my livelihood and that's my son and you will not talk to him about insurance anymore. What do you think you're doing to me? You're robbing me of my livelihood. You're turning my son against me. And if you persist in this, I will withhold my tithes and hurt your family. Spiritual leader in the church, Bill. <laughs> the Holy Spirit. It had to be the Holy Spirit because all this was unplanned. I looked him in the eye, a young man, just starting out. This man's supposed to be older and wiser and more spiritual than I'll ever be. I looked him in the eye and I said, Sir, you don't hold my future against us. Where'd that come from? Peace. He threatened my family. He threatened Abigail. He threatened hope. He held it over us. And yet the peace of God allowed me to answer him, which I hope convicted him. Do you see the peace of God? We, as nobody else, should go around afraid, worried, or anxious about anything. May, if the world explodes, it's okay. Amen? You say, well, you're teaching us not to care and just not to pay attention. No, I'm not. But if there's something I can't take care of, then I shouldn't fret over it. God will take care of it. Amen? Amen. This peace that comes into our lives originates with God because it is His nature. Romans chapter 5. You can write these down on the back of your bulletin. You can look for them. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. It 
says, therefore, being justified by faith, by faith we are saved. We cannot get saved of our own works. It's nothing we do. It doesn't matter how many times we get baptized. We can baptize each other until we run out of water. That does not save us. Faith in Jesus Christ is the Son of God. When we place our faith in Jesus and He justifies us before a holy God and makes everything right before a holy God, it says we have peace with God. <clears throat> you see, the whole thing of being separated from God by our sin is that we have this churning within us that we are not at peace. We're not at peace with our Creator. We're not at peace with ourselves. We're not at peace with anybody else. And this just churns in us and churns in us. And it makes life miserable, doesn't it? There's nothing I can do to justify myself before God. For He is holy and righteous, and I'm not. But when Jesus died on the cross, He justified me. And I place my faith in that, and it says, because of that, I now have peace with God. I'm not afraid of Him anymore. You say, well, Scripture tells us to fear God. It's talking about reverence in Him and bowing low before Him and giving Him His due. But I'm not afraid of ret retribution. I'm not afraid of punishment. I'm not afraid to stand in His presence. Hebrews tells us to come boldly into the presence of God <clears throat> if we're believers. In verse 2 it says, By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. I not only have peace with God, but I have access to God. Jesus says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus says, I'll be up with you always. How does he do this? He does it through the Holy Spirit. And the mystery and the amazing thing is that I don't have to sit here all week, the rest of my life with y'all to enjoy the unity of the Holy Spirit. Because when I go home, I take him with me, do I not? He's not left here sitting on a pew. And when Dwayne Cook goes home, he takes him with him, does he not? And Jay takes him with him, and Robert takes him with him, and Shirley takes him with him. And every believer in this building takes the Holy Spirit with him. He doesn't leave us alone, and he doesn't stay here. We didn't come here to meet him. We came here to meet each other and rejoice in the Lord and worship and praise him. Because he was with us when we woke up this morning. Brushed our teeth this morning. He watched us eat the food that he provided for us this morning. He saw us get dressed in the clothes he provided for us this morning. He was with us. But we have access to him because we can come to him because we have peace with him and we can make requests of him. We can just sit in his presence quietly and enjoy his presence. I think we need to do more of that. Just shut up and sit. Amen? And, and just be in His presence, not expecting anything, not wanting anything, just to be quiet in His presence. He says you have access through this faith, and it's because of the peace that you have with God. I've already mentioned this, but in Galatians chapter 5, it is because this is His character, and His character is peace among other things, and it comes to us through the Holy Spirit. But also in Galatians chapter 5, it, he lists the character of God and peace is one of them. It says, against such things there is no law. There are no restrictions on the peace of God. There are no duties placed upon the peace of God. There are no expectations placed upon the peace of God. Now, when we leave this place and we get in our cars and we crank them up and we pull out on the highway, there are a lot of expectations once we start driving, are there not? There are a lot of requirements when we start driving, are they not? There are a lot 
of rules that we have to follow in this country, not in every country, but in this country, <coughs> are they not? And what happens when we break the rules or we go off the grid and we do our own thing driving? It's like shopping at Walmart, isn't it? When it's out on the street. So you see, when you're in Walmart shopping, if you pay attention, everybody's doing their own thing. They'll come down the wrong side of the aisle. They'll push you out of the way. They'll run over you. They'll, they don't stop in the end of the aisle. They'll keep going. And that's the way people, when we do our own thing, do on the highways. But there are rules and regulations. Why? Not to hinder us, but to keep us operating together. There is no rule, no, no responsibility, and, and, and anything like that with the peace that's in our lives. This peace with God, this peace from God, takes away all fear. In James chapter 1, verse 5, he says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives <coughs> generously. I like this verse, but it's for the next phrase. It says, if you don't have the wisdom and you want to know something, ask God, he'll generously give you without reproach. I can remember going to my parents when I was younger and asking them something what to do about this or what to do about this. And I'd hear things like, and it bothered me because it wasn't any help at all. I heard things like, you made your bed lying. Any of y'all ever hear that? Mm -hmm. You made your bed, you lying. That wasn't any help to me. And all it did was make me not want to go back and ask them. I would be in fear of going and asking them because I would be ridiculed for what I asked or that I didn't know. And I would uh, feel reproach for it. I'd feel guilt for it. Now, all I want to do is get an answer. Sad to say, there's probably times I told my kids something similar and just used a different terminology. God doesn't do that to us. He doesn't belittle us. He doesn't put us down. When we come to Him, He welcomes us because of His Spirit, Jesus Christ. We are always welcomed and encouraged to come into His presence, and there's no ridicule because of it. He doesn't say, hey, dummy. He doesn't say, hey, you should have learned this by now. No, he welcomes us to help him. And I love that part of that verse. And it says, and it will be given to him. Paul says in another section of scripture, says, <clears throat> perfect love casts out all fear. When I dwell in the, the perfect love of Jesus and the perfect peace of Jesus, there is no fear in But also in verse 6 of James chapter 1, we read, But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. The peace of God allows me to live with him without doubts. I have no doubt. No doubts about this word, no doubts about what it teaches, no doubts of what the Spirit of God has done for me, through me, and in me. No doubt. See, the peace of God that passes all understanding gives rest to my soul. It opens up a door to be able to stand firmly in the midst of anything that's going on around me, to me, or me. We can rejoice in that peace that Jesus gave us because he did not leave us alone. He did not leave us as orphans or widows or people without. But he came in the spirit of Almighty God 
to walk with us today at Sunset Park Baptist Church in Wilmington, North Carolina to walk with us through life. If we can ever grasp that, the peace of, of joy of God will flow in our lives and nothing will be able to shake it. I don't know where you are in your life. I don't know if you're a Christian or not. But this same joy and peace that I've been talking about is available to you because of Jesus is available. same calmness and assurance that I've been talking about is available. All he asks you to do is place your faith in him. And give your life to him. As we sing 320, turn your eyes upon Jesus. You may not be a Christian today. You may be a blue church member. You may be someone who has been baptized. You may be someone who has lived a good moral life and yet there is that knowledge inside of you that things aren't right.